Welcome back. Now we're going to turn to East Ramapo, uh, where parents in the controversial school district, they're calling on the state here for more help. Parents and activists want the state education commissioner to cancel the sale of a school building to an ultra-Orthodox Jewish congregation. Now, if anybody out there says, why are we talking about a sale of a school building? Well, in many ways, uh, it's really symbolic about where we are in this conversation. These same parents would also like the state to finally get fully invested in and remove all nine members of the Board of Ed. They started a petition that says that the school board secretly sold this Hillcrest Elementary School for less than five million bucks, which they say is well below its fair market value. Now, now, Scott, obviously this is an issue you know very well here, and you said before your wife in, involved in, in, in the school system in East Ramapo, they used to sell buildings or have sold buildings for as much as a dollar in the past. So while at the face of it, 4.9 seems to be, you know, a market uptick, people are still saying it's less than it could have gone for. And again, it's being sold to, uh, you know, to a group that plans to build a yeshiva there. Um, from a macro conversation, I thought once the monitor got involved and once the report came down, this would be different. You don't get the impression a lot has really changed. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. And, and the monitor really hasn't taken hold yet. Of course, there's debate about that within the school district, the parents versus administration, et cetera, et cetera. But this building is interesting because it already has been denied the sale um, once. Um, so they're really, at, uh, with respect to that, forget for the moment the call for others, right. the board to sit down. The question is, and this, uh, and this is what confounds me, and I don't know the answer to this, you have to have an appraisal by a public entity to sell a public building. It's owned by the public. You can't sell it for less, and you, can, and you shouldn't sell it for more. You've got to sell it, well, if you can, you, of course yeah, you will, yeah. but, but you've got to sell it for what it's appraised value. And so there, is, there may be a substantial argument here, um, and it may not be the Commissioner of Education. It may be a legal issue that you're really dealing with as to whether you're uh, undermining the public asset issue. Uh, and I think that's what's coming up again. And, and you remember the tensions there are still uh, right. as tense as they ever were. Well, I mean, the context of that is that it, the, the Orthodox community has somewhat taken over part of, the, part of the, the governmental structure of the town, certainly the school board. And a lot of parents say, well, they're only favoring or making decisions that favor the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community at the expense of uh, other minorities or just... Uh, you know, uh, students in general. I don't think this proposed sale changes anybody's impression that there may be some favoritism. And, and to that point, Dominic, you're a Rockland resident. You, it, you've that's got, my school district. Well, that is your that school district. About. Was there a sense, is it fair for me to say, that a few months <clears> ago <throat> that, all right, the big boys have gotten involved here and things are going to change and that when you see things like this, the indication is nothing's really changed. Um, my, my point to you guys <clears throat> always has been everything is political. And you might have had a monitor, but you were in the middle of a race for governor. No one is going to rock the boat with Governor Cuomo's reelection up in the air. Here's what they know in Rockland County. You can go against the Hasidim, but if you do, you're going to lose every single one of those votes. And they vote together. That's, that's one blocks, common yep. denominator. It is disgusting what is going on. You're dealing with a school district that's almost all black and Latino and an all basically Hasidim school board and all the money for the most part is going to the Hasidim kids. And they're literally selling public buildings and county executive, I just want to piggyback on your one point. You mentioned the appraisal of public buildings. You are correct. No one knows this better than you. But we both know that tonight I can hire five different appraisers that are put down on paper any price that I want for a building, well, if the I mean, money's that, right. I mean, that's true. Let's also clarify that the monitor has not been selected. There is no monitor yet because the state legislature has to, has to essentially set up the guidelines for it. So there's no monitor in place at this point. I think it's important to point out. Yep. The second thing is that there are legitimate issues with respect to, to how they operate the school system, but there are also other issues. I mean, they do, they're, they're not just all ultra-Orthodox ultra on that board, um, and they do provide for funding, and they're trying to find ways to fund things. Of course, they, these one-shots are not good at all. I, I think, I, I think on, a, on a positive thing, because I want to get to the next one, at least the election's behind us. So there's not a looming election here and the political pressures attached to it. And there's so always an election coming up. There is, but <laughs> I think now would be the time here. And I don't think headlines like this uh, make it easier for folks to continue to sit on the sidelines. All right. Um, 
we've talked before about the problems with, with Rikers. Well, the seemingly corrupt New York prison system is again finding itself in more hot water. City investigation into the hiring practice at New York City jails found that hiring practices were in complete disarray. City investigators reviewed 153 job applications of people that the Correction Department recently hired. Now, these are just the recent hires. They found that more than a third of the problems should have been that these people had here should have disqualified them from even getting a job um, or certainly required more probing. Investigation also found that many of the hires had been arrested more than once, some rejected by the NYPD for psychological issues, others had friends or relatives who were current or former inmates, gang members, etc. And the hiring process is said one also, uh, you know, wouldn't figure out if they would weed out gang affiliations. It, it, it's just kind of exhibit A when people have distrust here and they say, oh, you can't get things right. My God, if you're not even figuring out if guards uh, have any gang ties, let alone, yeah. you know, rap sheets, I mean, come on. Is this uh, some sort of uh, pressure from the federal government hiring? Oh, would standards? you stop? Here I go to you, and now you're going is it? there. No, I'm, a no, I'm asking. No. I'm asking. What, no, what is no, it? No, what is it? Is it, just on. is it they're just dropping the I ball think, on every single hiring, background I it, check? I think it's also, I, I don't it's think not a lot bad of people. hiring. Let's call it what it is. It's an extremely powerful union president who runs the city department of correction. Norman Seabrook runs it, period. There's no other excuse. You can't say they're letting people go by because they're black. Maybe they are a little well, bit. I'm not saying but, that. But, but, saying, no, but, but I mean, why would Norman want to hire these guys? They're only going to well, cause in, in the cases, In one of the cases, the person was pushed through because it was said they were friends of Seabrook's family. My question and, is your question. And you know, is Seabrook what, is, is a friend of this show. Yeah. A friend yeah, of the show, I mean, but, but he, he, it's a little too much power for one guy. I wasn't saying affirmative action. I was saying... Oh, of course I was not. Say, I, wasn't, okay. I wasn't saying that. I was but saying, I was saying yeah. who's behind this, think, these hiring the practices. People, for the most part, don't care what happens behind bars. I mean, I, I don't think point. people care what happened in prison or in jails because, well, you wouldn't be there if you didn't have a reason, so whatever. Mm. You know, whatever, however bad the conditions are, it's your fault for being there. All right, well... When we come back, we're going to light things up a little bit, and, and uh, here's a little teaser. It's our still photo um, of the day here, and it features some of the stars who are up for the Academy Awards this year. We're going to have a look at them and other actors, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of movies, forget about it, I haven't seen, I haven't even heard of here. We're going to talk about that straight ahead. TJ, you didn't make the cut.